A new National Geographic 3D movie rolls into IMAX theaters this weekend. It's called Mysteries of the Unseen World and takes viewers to the hidden dimensions of our everyday universe. Little was known about lightning till high-speed cameras turned the research upside down. Literally. What our eyes see is energy flowing downward from the clouds. Now we can see that electricity also moves upward from the ground. Award-winning filmmaker Louis Schwartzberg is the director of Mysteries of the Unseen World. Louis, good morning. Good morning. Um, th th some of this video is just stunning. You, you've been working on this project for a long time. What got you fascinated with this? Well, I've always wanted to take people on a journey to discover things that the human eye can't see, mm -hmm. things that are either too slow, too fast, too small, or simply invisible. And I've always used my camera as a portal to take people into that world. How do you accomplish images like the one that we're seeing? Well, like the flowers, that was like ultraviolet light. And what's great, you've, you learned that the bees are attracted to the flowers because the flowers have special markings, like landing lights, so that the bees, which are messengers of their pollen, help the flowers reproduce. And when they reproduce, we get fruits, nuts, berries, and life goes forward. What was, as you worked on this project, because you cover a lot of different things here, what was the most fascinating to you, the most surprising? Oh, gosh, so much of it. Um, I would say the films we, we shot with the scanning electron microscope, mm -hmm. where you can see things that are a million times smaller than the human eye, right. looking like inside the eye of a flea, and we zoomed all the way down to the atom. That, mm -hmm. to me, was, I think, the most breathtaking. Tell us about this image. Uh, this, this was uh, using data. We have created a time-lapse shot, which I've always wanted to do. It's like putting a camera in outer space. And what we're seeing are ocean currents and clouds being formed and, and the aurora borealis being, you know, crowned on top. It's the most magical shot of Earth. It's interesting because as you watch the film, you really get a sense of our interdependence, how yes. everything affects everything. Was that yes. your intention when you were making the film? Absolutely. Everything is connected because when you go from the microscopic to that shot of, of planet Earth, you realize that the rhythms and patterns of nature all look alike. I mean, people refer to the film as eye candy and mesmerizing, but it's actually really nutritious for the soul because you do get that idea that it is all connected. And, and as the lightning image showed, yeah. um, there's so much we miss. Another of the images I love in the film is, is a water balloon popping. Yeah. What's that? What happens there? Well, that's a fun shot. I mean, something as simple as a water balloon, but look at it, you know, the rubber goes away and, and the water holds itself. I mean, I think a, a, a scientist could write a textbook on water dynamics just by looking at this magic moment, which normally would disappear in less than a second. Mm -hmm. When I look at the images you've captured, though, there's a part of me that thinks this has to be the result of new technology. Is it? I mean, would this have been, a bit, this film, mm. could you have even made it, say, five years ago? Probably not. I mean, the big advances in digital imaging, especially in slow motion, where we can do high-speed shots at 1,000 frames up to 10,000 frames per second, would have been impossible possible to have done in film. So those breakthroughs are important. Plus, you know, we want this to be 3D IMAX, so it's got to be on a giant 80-foot screen in 3D, and technology has really helped us move that forward. One of the things I loved, Louis, about, about the process of you shooting this was that it actually began in a way because you couldn't afford film. That's why you went into <laughs> time-lapse photography? That's true. I mean, I love nature and that sense of wonder, but when I graduated from film school, mm -hmm. I couldn't afford to shoot 35 millimeter film. When you shoot time lapse, you shoot one frame every 15 minutes. So I shoot four seconds in a 24 hour period. Right. And so <laughs> um, I've been shooting like this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nonstop for over 35 years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'll ever get tired of doing it because I love seeing plants move to the light. Mm -hmm. What was Beautiful the coolest stuff. thing you shot? Oh, it's, oh God, it's like, what's your favorite baby? Uh, <laughs> I, I love the owl flying toward camera yeah. in slow motion, and um, I think the uh, scanning electron microscopic imagery, that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. right. To go down that far and to see things that are in your belly button right. or mites that are in your eyes. I right. think it's cool that kids see things that are creepy. Well, Louis Schwartzberg, thank you so much for your time this okay. morning. Okay, thank you.